Ah, ça Mike's Daily Podcast. Ep ep episode 1425. 1425. I am Mike Matthews. And we are at Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, we have the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, plus... We get on this little thing about how people get stuck on stupid. We talk about that. That's our segment today. Mike's Daily Podcast. Our news segment. And I think we get a little stuck on stupid with the Instagram. Mike's Daily Podcast. Do you have that app? I think a lot of people have that app. They have that because maybe they're not into the Facebook crap. And so they get into Instagram. Of course, they're owned by the same company. And then they do that. And it's all kinds of misery to us people with the social media that we hate and love simultaneously. Mike's Daily Podcast. Because there's this one girl I know who always has a Mike's story in the Daily story section of podcast Instagram. Yeah. Whenever I open up Instagram, she is the first story. Always. Every day, she's got a new story. And she always puts the camera right on her face. And she always says something like, I remember this time when I had a mall. You know, stuff like that. I guess stuff that I talk about on this show. Yeah. That was a good time way long ago when I had a mole. Look who walked in. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? As a disgruntled fiddle player, tell you what. What? I heard y'all got some good Trump drops y'all wanted to play. Yes, I do. And I don't have them ready. Oh, yes, I do. I have them right here. Let's... Oh, look who else walked in. Hello, Mike. I make the delicious root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Okay. Let's play one for you now, Brewmaster. But all my life, I've heard that decisions are much different when you sit behind the desk in the Oval Office. In other words, when you're President of the United States. Somehow that quote just really gets to me. And then this other one from our President. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Doesn't that make you go, whoa? I know it does. Mark, I think our president is dealing with a bunch of stuff, and it all comes from the news. And here's today's podcast picture. That girl just interrupted me. Ariel did interrupt you, and it, it, with good reason, because we have our wonderful podcast picture, which includes this guy. Hello, Dave Mike. This is Valentino, the banking attendant. And yeah, I'm in the drawing today. I'm very honored, Dave. Awesome. Hey, Greta Housen's back on the C-SPAN. Yay. She's in a beautiful emerald green dress today. And she loves to show her wonderful shoulders. Let's hear it for Greta's shoulders. Now, I just wanted to also mention this little do we have this one too oh yeah we have one other trump thing oh it's not a trump thing whoa it's this i'm sorry dave i'm afraid i can't do that that's from space odyssey 2001 yeah whoa. so as two stories i try to T turn off the stories on Instagram and I looked everywhere I couldn't find the, the off button so there it is every morning and I keep looking at it and of course uh, I have to follow Kate Upton and Kate Upton's story is basically watch my new movie it's called The Layover and so I see that every day and yeah so that's my life also my life is dealing with an interesting group of people in the radio world radio hosts and uh, some of them have been in the biz a long time and some have not they're just getting started the ones that have been in the biz a long time are very they they can't communicate it's interesting they've been in the communication business a long time and they can't communicate they can't tell me what they really want and so i have to i go do you want this and they're like oh my god is it that difficult 
I had one guy just fly off the handle when I asked a question to try and see what the heck he wanted. And then this other guy who's never been in radio before, he calls me up when I'm not at work and says, Hey, Mike, you know, you, I need someone to help me with my PowerPoint presentation with the audio. And since you work in radio, you can help me, right? And I said, uh, and people get mad at me when I go, uh, but the point is if I'm going, uh, in your ear hole, it's because you're asking me something that is kind of unexpected. No, it is very unexpected and my brain can't process it. So I'm going to say, uh, and it's because you decided to throw a curveball at me Ah. and I have to take the time to process it. Well, basically I did, he hung up on me, that guy. And then I processed it and I talked to someone else and I said to my, I said to this other person that I work with, I said, I'm, I'm not giving my phone number out to anybody that I, uh, that are any of the hosts anymore. That's it's over with. Cause they just call and ask stupid questions. So, or text. One of them texted me something that had nothing to do with any, I'm, I'm looking at the text going, what? What is this? It. Uh, what is this? Exactly. So, ah. Uh, thank you. That's the radio biz. And you know, it's the public service biz. And you never know. People want what they want, and then they can't say what they want, what they really want, and then it turns into a Spice Girl song. And then we. Mike's Daily Podcast.com is the website where the, you can find all the old shows and. You can see all the past podcast pictures. You can help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that Amazon link, buy whatever it is you're going to buy, and that helps us out tremendously. And there's also the PayPal. You can help us out that way. If you do that, you'll become an Inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster and get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. We also have the YouTube channel, the Mike's Daily Podcast channel. And we have the Twitter. If you haven't checked us out on Twitter yet, at Mike Talks. We got a little gallery, the Mike's Daily Podcast Picture Gallery. And the shows, past shows, all at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Now let's get to the segment called. You know, I mean, people, you know, people get stuck on stupid. You know what I mean? And I think that's what it is. That sums it all up, basically, with the people I know at any rate. So, Russia, Russia. A top Trump aide emailed campaign officials last year about an individual seeking to arrange a meeting between top campaign officials and Russian President Vladimir Putin. This according to a new CNN report. The email sent by Rick Dearborn, who is now President Trump's deputy chief of staff, was unearthed by a congressional by a congressional investigators probing possible ties between the Trump campaign and Moscow. The identity of the individual who sought to arrange the meeting is not clear. CNN reported that the person was referenced as being from WV, which one source said meant West Virginia. Another source, however, told the network that the individual may have had political connections in West Virginia. Dearborn is said to have been wary about the proposed meeting. The White House did not comment. The email was sent in June of 2016, which is around the time that Trump campaign members, including the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., met with a Russian lawyer at Trump Tower who had promised compromising information on Hillary. Russian officials made other reported attempts to meet with members of Trump's campaign. The Washington Post obtained emails last week that targeted George Papadopoulos, who was a volunteer on Trump's campaign. No additional meetings between Russian-linked officials and Trump officials have been confirmed. Then there's Tesla. Everywhere you go in the Bay Area, you see Teslas. The model, what's the Model X or whatever? The Model T, the Model S? I forget what it is. And that, they're all over. And you know what? There was a time that they came out with this movie. I think this was over 10 years ago called The Death of the Electric Car. And Ed Begley Jr. Who, who was the, one of the early champions of electric cars. He's conducting a funeral because 
all the major car companies had decided to stop making electric cars. But then along Tesla comes and starts saying, no, we're going to make electric cars. And the all the car major car companies have followed suit. So we owe that at least to Tesla and Elon Musk. And someone who bought a car from Elon, one of the Teslas, said... On Twitter, at Elon Musk, can you guys program the car once in park to move back the seat and raise the steering wheel? Steering wheel is wearing. Just 24 minutes later, Elon Musk tweeted back with the following message. Good point. We will add that to all cars in one of the upcoming software releases. Hey, that's amazing, isn't it? To hear back from them, to actually hear back. Because, okay... This one guy I work for, he went on a love fest yesterday about Apple, about how great Apple is. And you know what? Look all over the, uh, I, the iTunes store, whatever it's called, the Apple store. Try and find a phone number. I had an issue once where someone had hacked into my Apple account, my iTunes account, and I couldn't find a phone number to go, hey, what the hell? I, I need help here. And so you have to go through this weird email. The, uh, you have to email back and forth and to the website and finally get a hold of someone. It took a long time. Google's the same way with the Google Play Store. But the fact that Elon Musk replied right away on using Twitter. So that's the way to get a hold of him is on Twitter, by the way. So, and that may be the way of the future to talk to CEOs. Hey, Coke. Your drink is crap. Oh, we're working on that, Mike. Thanks. By removing it from the stores, because we don't want everyone to get diabetes anymore. I blame Coke for diabetes. Makes sense, doesn't it? And then uh, this story, why leasing a smartphone may be better than buying one. At the beginning of the smartphone era, you pretty much had to buy. You could either buy it outright carriers uh, or you could get it for a $200 ish with a two year contract and then on the phone at the end um, when you reached the end of the contract you paid for the phone it was two years old and trash so you'd go back and get a new phone and start over leasing is similar to the old system as you're still paying for the phone over the course of your contract, but it's not a much as so much a hidden fee now. They specify the monthly price up front and usually a separate line item on your bill. So you always know what you're being charged for. With the lease, they'll push you near the one year mark to trade the phone in for a new one. Phones don't get faster or bigger at the same rate that they used to, but there is a certain comfort to always having the latest. That's an interesting statement here made by the New York Times. Does it make fiscally sense uh, if you don't mind having an extra 20 or $30 per phone line item on your bill? It's not a bad way to go. Mm. And they talk about family plans here. And so I hate family plans. I want a phone for me. I use Cricket. Uh, I was able to get my phone for a dollar. And, and it, it's been working for over a year and I'm happy. And I hate all these other things they offer you. But, you know, I guess I, under, I understand if you're a family plan, you got a kid, you got a phone, it, you got to work it out. And the leasing thing, that's interesting. I would say, yeah, that makes sense if the phones can continue to advance in their tech. But they apparently are not in this article as much as they used to. So maybe it's all right to have an old phone for longer. And then finally, with the charging and recharging, shallow charges, discharges, and recharges are better than full ones because they put less stress on the battery so it lasts longer. When your battery is, battery is discharging, Battery University recommends that you only let it reach 50% before topping it up again. While you're charging it back up, you should also avoid pushing a lithium-ion battery all the way to 100%. Don't leave the device plugged in. Instead, follow the shallow discharge and recharge cycle that they mentioned. This is in popular science. Okay. And we go outside a cafe anyway. We're bringing Mike's daily podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. I don't really understand that, but all I know is that when I'm using the function on my phone for GPS... 
I have my phone plugged in to the cigarette lighter in my car because I know that drains the battery. And then I, when I get home, my phone isn't completely depleted and I can still use it the rest of the day. It says here regular full discharges aren't a good idea though. In general, you should be keeping your battery above 20%. According to Samsung, ah! Once a month, let the battery undergo a full discharge to about 5% just to recalibrate its self-assessment. The mechanism allows your laptop or smartphone to give you an estimated battery time remaining reading that's somewhat accurate. But like Samsung said, you shouldn't be keep letting it drop below 20%. Well, I wanted to very quickly, while we're wrapping up the show, jump over to this segment called... Email from email and your calm and not so calm mess. Because we did hear from the wonderful Bob who went up to Eclipse Country and he he calls this area he said he just got back to the Bay O area. Uh, but he the email before during the eclipse, actually the day of the eclipse, uh, this was about I think this was shortly after the eclipse ended. He said, we saw the full corona of the sun with our naked eyes. Amazing community park in Redmond, Oregon. 30 seconds of complete coolness. Say hi to Basil and give him a sloppy kiss from Bob and his son, Joe. Um, oh, I, did I also mention too, he said, we got up at 5 a.m. They were in Redmond, Oregon, inside the totality zone. Went to the observatory last night. Astronomer told us we'll see 29 seconds of complete totality here. Um, Let's see. And he said, oh, when he wrote this, it was about 10.15. Hold on to your celestial hats. Here comes the sun. Thank you, Bob, for that. Our newest listener, Bob. Next show... It's going to be Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. Thanks for stopping by, Benita. Yeah, I'm going to go see the eclipse right now. I'm going inside. Bye, I'll bye. Uh, uh, she's slightly confused. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.